side, Pippi and I are back. And today we're going to look at the use of virtual reality for pupils with autism to reduce anxiety levels and develop social skills. Three of the top 10 autism research priorities determined by autistica.org in 2019 are which interventions improve mental health or reduce mental health problems in autistic pupils, which interventions reduce anxiety in autistic people and which environments and supports are most appropriate in in terms of achieving the best outcomes in education, life and social skills in autistic people. So that was the research that they, th that they thought would be good research for 2019 and I would say that the virtual reality room probably answers that quite well. Children with autism have been shown to display high levels of comfort with technology for many reasons. Computer programs are predictable, logical, and can provide intellectual outlet for children with specialised interests. What they do find difficult is actual real life situations. How often as a parent of a young child with autism stood by helplessly as their child has had a meltdown in the supermarket, crossing the road, on a train, and how can we use technology to make real life situations easier for children with autism? That was something that concerned me greatly as head of a special school um, because I'd had many parents come into me whose children had had meltdowns at these particular places and it had been extremely distressing for the parents and very, very distressing for those children. Children with autism can have phobias and fears about real life situations and it's important for parents and teachers to know how to prepare pupils with autism for those um, situations. Whilst pupils with learning difficulties could struggle with technology, requiring high levels of cognitive competence in some cases, particularly if they have learning difficulties, as well as learning differences. It's reassuring to note, however, that technological advances can also allow those pupils to access educational opportunities that have been unavailable to them in the past. Eye gaze is a prime example of this, um, but there are many others um, that we can go into on other occasions. The school that I was head at, um, and there is a link to its videos on this channel that you can have a look at the um, therapies that we introduced whilst I was there. Um, I was head there for 10 years, it was a brand new school, and we introduced um, over 20 26 technological and therapeutic interventions into that school because a child needs to be in the right frame of mind to learn before it can learn. 75% um, of the pupils, they were aged 2 to 11, 104 pupils, 75% um, of those pupils had autism as a primary or secondary diagnosis. By meeting pupils where they are, and using advanced technologies and therapeutic interventions, pupils are able to achieve dramatically improved outcomes and experience successful attainment of learning goals. We provided evidence over the years as a school, both videos, as I've said, there is a link on this channel for you to have a look at some of the videos, and also written evidence and research papers that myself and many of the staff were involved in writing. Um, many of the staff also um, attended conferences to um, talk about the um, benefits of the therapeutic interventions 
and as a pioneer school as we were um, we supported many schools in introducing these into their schools as well. We're living in exponential times and in the near future children will be using technologies that haven't even been invented yet. Children with autism have been shown to, explain, to display high levels of comfort with technology, as I said, for many reasons. Computer programs are logical, can provide an intellectual outlet for children who have specialised interests. And those of us who have worked with children who have autism know how much they like computers, iPads and other kinds of technology. But what they do find difficult is real life situations. How often, as I've said before, as a child stood by helplessly, as, uh, as a parent, sorry, stood by helplessly as their child's had a meltdown. So how can we use technology to make real life situations easier for children with autism? Parents and teachers have watched children with autism play back a scene in a movie over and over again, rewind it, to help them make sense of a confusing world. What if we were to use that knowledge to create or to recreate virtual reality situations? The local supermarket that they find difficult, the local road crossing, the local train station. What if we have a room that children with autism can enter, press a switch and the room becomes an interactive version of the local crossing. Safe and secure with a trusted teaching assistant, the pupil can play back that scene or scenes as many times as they wish until they feel comfortable enough to visit its real counterpart. Children with autism rarely have opportunities to experience or learn to cope with day-to-day -day situations. Using virtual simulations enable them to acquire skills that will make it possible for them to become independent. We're on the cusp of a serious and arguably revolutionary step in technology provision that schools who have pupils with autism and learning differences need to take seriously as a classroom resource. It's motivating and engaging pupils like never before. In September 2016, I as a head teacher was able to set up a virtual reality room in the school that I was head of. Um, in North Wales and it gives pupils that 360 degree experience. Now we used a firm called OMI, OMI, um, I'm sure you can google it but if you want more information just um, put it in the comments below and I'll um, put it down there for you. Um, but I'm sure there are many other firms so I don't want to um, advertise too much. But anyway, um, we then, um, although it um, provided the technology, our staff provided the experiences that were going to be used in those rooms. So the setting up of the room enabled the school to be able to offer its pupils the chance to experience and play out difficult situations, which they often meet during their daily life and routine. Handheld controllers and sensors give a whole new feel to the artificial reality experience. We have transmitters and receivers on the walls and the immersive experience is very real. It's not simply an engagement tool or a gimmick. It allows a pupil to explore, to experience as if they're actual, actually present in that environment or place. The experiential situations that they can enjoy were chosen as a result of communicating with their parents about situations which had caused them the greatest concern. For the first trial, we used the template that was already refined by the University of Haifi because our parents had um, voted that crossing the road was very difficult for um, their children. So we used the model researchers Professor Naomi Jossman and Professor Tamar Wise developed from the University of Haifa in Israel. And they found a month-long program of virtual reality training designed locally um, could help children with autism and they, used, they did it with children aged between 7 and 12. 
it dramatically improved their ability to cross the road safely. It's widely recognised that the best way to teach children with autism is through repeated practice in natural settings. The dangers involved in crossing a street, however, rule this method out. A virtual reality is obviously a good alternative. Six autistic children were involved in the study at Hafer University. The children spent a month practising um, to cross virtual reality streets, waiting for virtual lights at the crossroads to change and to look left or right for virtual cars. And the children quickly mastered the different levels of the virtual reality system, including the ninth most difficult level where vehicles were travelling at high speed. They then applied their virtual reality skills to a local practice area where they were able to navigate a street, crosswalk and traffic signals. In testing, the researchers found the children showed an improvement in their skills following the training on the virtual streets. Pupils at the school where I was head um, experienced difficulty when they are required to wait at the local pedestrian crossing, which actually has a, a, a waiting time of three minutes, which is quite a long time for children um, who are anxious anyway to wait. So this happened whilst they were out on educational visits in, in the locality um, and visits to the community. And as a trial run, the first virtual experience that was set up was called Crossing the Road. One of the teaching staff, Helen, visited um, the local pedestrian crossing and took various photographs and made a recording of all the sounds experienced there um, she then went, she then transferred these onto, a, then uh, not she, um, one of the other staff um, transferred these um, onto a program on the computer which was connected to the virtual reality equipment which resulted in the 3D version of the crossing and relevant sounds being projected onto three walls in, in the room. Each pupil who it was felt would benefit from this extra interaction was offered an individual session of between 10 to 15 minutes in length once a week, spanning over a period of eight weeks in total and split up into three stages. During this time, each pupil was encouraged to act out crossing the road. They were required to look for and listen to all the sights and sounds associated with what happens when you cross the road using the pedestrian crossing. They learned how to press the button to activate the green and red man and they learned to be patient and look and listen continually for the red and green man. A panorama of the junction was projected onto three walls. The coloured spots on the floor were beams of light projected from the ceiling and each had an image attached along with an accompanying sound where relevant. These were activated by passing a disc or a wand across the appropriate colour to break the beam. Once the children were confident with the first stage of the experience, they moved on to the second stage in the virtual reality room. The setting up of actual pedestrian traffic lights, which had a timer built into its workings. Using the timer, the traffic light sequence was worked through and the pupils had to stand still at the crossing until the lights changed and the green man showed instructing them to cross the road. At the third stage, pupils were taken to the actual crossing to see whether the extra input throughout these sessions had been successful or not in helping them cross the road in a safe manner. During a total of one week, each pupil was taken to the crossing where the success or failure of the programme was observed. results were that out of 30 pupils who took part in this experiment, research, all 30 of them were able to arrive at the crossing, <laughs> press the button to activate the red and green man and wait patiently until it was time to cross without becoming agitated or stressed. Each child was able to cross the road with confidence. Each individual session was written up and recorded along with photographs taken of each child experiencing the real crossing. The virtual reality room has since been used for an individual pupil 
whose parents had to do a two mile detour every day to bring him to school so they didn't have to go through traffic lights. He was very agitated in the car and screamed if they came up on a traffic light during a car ride. The situation was recreated in the virtual reality room and the pupil was able to operate the traffic lights himself. After two weeks of daily visits to the room, the parents were able to report that they no longer have to avoid traffic lights when out in the car. Their child no longer has an issue with traffic lights and is perfectly content on a, on a car ride. An added bonus is, is they can leave home at a reasonable time. Pupils at the school have visited the dentist, which has been um, a problem um, for many children um, going to the dentist. Um, and um, the dental team um, report a huge success rate with that, um, 100% they say, so I, I, I trust that it's true. Um, supermarket, the local supermarket's been very successful with that, the train station, the local zoo, um, and all of these, have, they manage, if they have problems with these and the parents have asked um, specifically, then they will visit those places in the virtual reality room before they actually go to them in, in um, real life situations. Um, and so we have had um, a 100% success rate with this. Other schools have visited the school to see the VR room in action and now the process, uh, are now in the process of setting up their own VR rooms in their schools. The virtual reality room also became the school and site of the secondary school that our year six pupils transfer to every September. Some of the pupils don't take part in transition projects due to their high anxiety levels that they encounter when they have attempted to take part in transition projects. But thankfully to the VR technology that we now have available, they're able, we are able to create a safe in-house transition project using repeated practice in getting those pupils used mm. to the secondary school and its grounds um, mm. through the virtual reality experience, visit, uh, meeting the staff um, on the virtual reality, in the virtual reality room as well, seeing them, mm. you know, encountering them. Um, all of this in preparation mm. for their actual transition at the end of the summer term. I visited the secondary school on the first planned transition day and was able to um, witness every pupil settled into their transition experience. And this continued with our ticket for the rest of the summer term. The use of virtual reality to create a controlled and safe environment that is closely representative of real life has proven beneficial to the students that I've had in my care. We all learn by seeing and doing, and pupils with autism are now able to build up their own private secure library of how to cope with social situations that us ordinary people take for granted. I have to thank Sam, who um, was the teacher who spent hours and hours of her own time recreating these 360 um, virtual experiences. Helen, um, one of our teaching assistants, who supported and gave talks at um, um, national autistic um, day centres, um, uh, conferences, sorry, not centres, and um, has done a huge amount of um, background work um, in preparation for all of it. We, before I left the school, we also brought in the um, class VR glasses. Um, a lot of children with autism don't like, hold, don't like having glasses attached to their head, but the class VR, you hold them in front of you and you can get the Google expeditions so they can visit hundreds of places all over the world um, through the class VR. Um, and um, certainly a lot of the children get a lot out of that. Those with profound and multiple learning difficulties can still visit the virtual reality room and get the chance to enjoy visiting different places through the virtual reality room because again they do get anxious when they're taken to these places for the first time. So they get the opportunity to go in there and see these things first. We've even got a visit to Father Christmas because they tend to go to the same Father Christmas with school every year but we prepare them for that beforehand. So all in all, would I recommend a virtual reality room in all special schools? Yes, indeed I would.
Thank you for listening.